my talk is about the tool for automatic uh, tuning of compiler options and how to use this tool in development of GCC. Uh, our goal is improvement uh, of performance for ARM, of, of GCC for ARM, and we use uh, popular uh, open source libraries and applications like SQLite, uh, Zlib X264, and uh, we'd like uh, to be our performance improvements persistent, so uh, we make the optimizations or fixes to GCC and submit the patches back to GCC mainline. This is our goal. And when you submit the patch, everybody asks you how it behaves on spec, not only your application, uh, your tuning. So we uh, verify the improvements on spec. So traditional approach to improving, uh, if improving the compiler is to take your application, uh, find its uh, hot places, uh, look into the assembly uh, to see uh, what maybe is wrong in it uh, and find the places uh, to improve. Uh, then you try to uh, trace uh, the code that you see in your assembly to G specific GCC optimization that has generated uh, that code or didn't generate uh, the code th uh, that you wanted. Uh, but uh, usually it's hard looking at the assembly. Uh, if you see many counters at load instruction, you don't know if it's if it, uh, a cache miss which is specific to this application or is it unnecessary load because of spill or what is it or can it be improved uh, theoretically or not. So it's hard to find uh, uh, is this code is suboptimal or is it optimal? And also it's uh, hard to trace uh, the deficiency you found in the code to a specific optimization that had produced it. Uh, on the other hand, uh, multi-platform compiler uh, often leaves a room for tuning for improvement. Uh, in case of uh, GCC, uh, when you start to port it to a new platform. Uh, you're just writing a backend and you don't test all the optimizations that were added uh, uh, for many years in it uh, one by one. You just uh, uh, care at the first stage for the correctness, correctness of uh, your generated code. But uh, many platforms has their own specifics uh, which wasn't considered when uh, optimizations were written. Uh, in case of ARM, there are barrel shifter, for example, uh, or uh, thumb conditional execution. Also, there are parameters like cache line size uh, and so on, uh, which you may uh, have forgotten uh, when you port in. So, uh, we propose an automatic tool which uh, will aid uh, to find such deficiencies in the compiler. We use a genetic algorithm uh, to find best performing options or uh, worst performing options uh, enabled by default. Uh, then uh, the tool will help, help to determine which of these options impact the performance the most. And uh, then when you know uh, which uh, option is most, the most important, you uh, just do vimdiv and see uh, the difference in the assembly. It will be much more manageable than looking uh, at the assembly from the start. Then you can fix uh, the optimization you, ha uh, you have found. For example, here is uh, a code from Crafty uh, found with our tool. With O2, uh, GCC takes a shift expression and puts uh, it uh, up. Uh, it doesn't account uh, for barrel shifter in ARM where you can uh, have a shift expression uh, in the same uh, arithmetic instruction as uh, you can have a shift for free actually. So if you disable GCC, uh, it will work better. 
uh, when you see uh, this code, you can uh, fix it. It's, it's easier. So uh, our tool is about uh, finding such test cases in uh, your application of interest and uh, quickly uh, fixing them. So uh, it uses a genetic algorithm to generate a combination of options. Uh, it supports actually any compiler. Uh, we tried it with uh, ARMCC and uh, GCC. Uh, we don't make any assumptions about uh, options, their default values or uh, dependency between the compiler options. Uh, and by default, it's uh, configured for GCC options. Uh, it works well with cross-compiling. Uh, it supports uh, cross-compiler and targets uh, to run a compiled application. And uh, does it first in parallel. So it pipelines uh, compilation and execution on different device and uh, supports many uh, connected targets. Uh, also, uh, it supports uh, multi-objective tuning, so uh, we can tune uh, simultaneously for performance and uh, code size, for example, and builds a Pareto frontier, uh, so uh, we can choose an optimal trade-off between the parameters. It does uh, error checking, it's uh, mandatory when doing uh, automatic tuning, because once we were tuning a rasterization library and uh, some combination of loop optimizations uh, lead to an error, so it uh, didn't process the last line of every image. And it was a speed up uh, because of that. And of course, a genetic algorithm evolved to uh, that wrong solution. And uh, it was even hard to see uh, by the eye. So it supports uh, timeouts, sec faults, and uh, just uh, like spec, uh, comparing with reference. Uh, the main thing is the tool for results analysis, uh, so to find which uh, options are the most important, because genetic algorithm is not very smart and it gives very long uh, uh, common line parameters, but our tool uh, makes it easier to find out which are important. Uh, also, it supports uh, profile-guided optimizations, uh, so it compiles profile with profile generate, uh, then uh, runs, then it recompiles with profile use and does it in interleaves that phases so uh, the target and the host uh, do not stall. Uh, the genetic algorithm is implementation is pretty straightforward. Uh, the entity, the chromosome, uh, consists of uh, GCC flags, they can be binary flags like minus F or minus F null, uh, numerical parameters, or enums. Uh, GCC has uh, around 200 options, and uh, you can uh, tune all of them uh, at once. Uh, by default, numerical parameters are normally distributed uh, around their default values to speed up uh, the convergence. Then there are uh, populations. Uh, there are usually several populations and each, each of them goes to a separate test board. And uh, this allows uh, evolution to go uh, in individual branches. Sometimes it's better and uh, the best solutions can migrate from uh, one test board uh, to another. Also, we support uh, standard uh, operations for genetic algorithm like mutation, crossbreeding, and migration. This is uh, the general scheme of TACT. Uh, build pool is a separate uh, directory on the file system, and usually it's just a prefix, uh, install prefix for a tarball. So, uh, the genetic algorithm core generates uh, common line parameters. Then, uh, in parallel, we compile uh, to different prefixes, uh, different instances of the application with those parameters. And uh, using a 
uh, task queue management system. Uh, we uh, assign a test board to run the compiled application and uh, in optimal scenario uh, the runtime of an application uh, workload data should be uh, the right size so uh, the host uh, uh, has time to finish the compilation while uh, the test boards finish uh, running uh, that workload data. After a while, uh, it ends up with some uh, result. <laughs> so uh, the biggest uh, challenge is uh, to filter the result to uh, uh, find out what uh, makes sense. Uh, some compiler options uh, doesn't affect the compilation at all. Uh, for example, uh, Many options are turned on by default in O2 and we don't make distinction because it's uh, very hard uh, to know statically what are the dependencies between the options. And uh, some options uh, work only uh, with the right data or with combination of another options. So uh, first we are filtering just by comparing uh, hashes of the binaries. If uh, we compile with some option and without it uh, produces the same binary, then we can throw that options, uh, that option. Uh, after reducing, after filtering the results uh, from uh, this uh, amount of options, uh, we usually end up with this small amount, smaller amount, uh, which is uh, typically 15 to 30 uh, percent. We do some uh, speed up techniques, we use some sp mm, parallel compilation to filter that we are comparing hashes and uh, doing caching of what uh, options uh, has historically been significant and which not, because we're taking, uh, we're usually taking five best uh, option sets for an application and if we know that uh, loop vectorization for example wasn't uh, significant for one option set then likely for others it won't be also. And we do binary search according to hash. Uh, then we have uh, fewer options left, but still uh, we'd like to know which uh, contribute to performance the most and what is the exact contribution of each option. And uh, if we are application developer, uh, this is not uh, only for compiler developers, but also for application developers. Uh, if we can pick a couple known options and include them uh, into a make file, for example, loop prefetching or vectorization, we can safely enable just the two options. Uh, so we are, try, uh, we are starting excluding options one by one from uh, this set and see which is the impact. But this is not enough because um, some options uh, go together. You can't exclude uh, just one. Uh, you probably want uh, dependency between the options and uh, to have them both. So uh, at the first step we will be excluding the least significant option. Uh, and then uh, we will repeat the process for the rest of the options. So we are building our table uh, from bottom uh, to top. Uh, we know the least significant, then repeat the process and uh, building from bottom least significant and end up with most significant. Then uh, we uh, can end up with uh, such table and at the top will be the most significant options. Uh, so we can read it as here is O2. If we add uh, prefetch loop arrays, it will result, for example, in performance loss. Then we add the right parameter, the cache line size. Uh, so it gives that many percent and we can cut off at any line of the table to get the performance uh, uh, we want. 
we also uh, speed up uh, this uh, ranging process uh, also use, using caching uh, with kind of binary search and uh, the speed up uh, of ranging it's uh, like two or three times compared to straightforward uh, here is uh, the example of tuning uh, vortex spec uh, test uh, for us, most interesting were uh, the options marketed with RED because uh, they are different from their default level in O2. So, for example, we have to look at if conversion to see what's wrong there for this application. Then we do Vim diff of two assemblers with if conversion and without it and see what's wrong. Uh, and uh, green options, uh, if uh, we see it on many applications, we may consider them for including uh, into default optimization for this platform, for example. But so far we haven't found such option. Uh, here are some results of uh, tuning uh, six applications. Uh, the main thing here is uh, that from 200 original GC options, uh, the significant those that affect uh, compilation, there are just uh, around 10 to 25. Uh, then uh, the number of options uh, that retain the 80% of performance improvement are even less. And uh, if you are focused on uh, the options that are different from their default uh, value, uh, they are uh, also not too much to look at them manually. <coughs> we have also tuned six uh, spec 2000 tests. And uh, we found that uh, the results are persistent across different data. We tuned them on uh, train, and then verified on ref, so uh, they are quite stable. The average improvement is uh, around 10% if we count uh, just these six tests, which was verified to 6%. Here is an example uh, of an issue found by TACT. On ARM, uh, it's uh, much faster to load constants with uh, move T, move W pair than loading uh, it from me memory. Uh, but uh, constant propagation was gluing together uh, two symbol refs uh, for low and high part of uh, the address. Uh, and then uh, this resulted in symbol ref uh, emitting uh, an LDR uh, load instruction. So uh, the patch added the split uh, to the later stage and the, it resulted back in move T, move W pair. Actually, this uh, patch wasn't developed by us, but uh, rather found in uh, code sorcery repository, but it was forgotten somehow. Also, uh, we support tuning by Pareto front. Uh, here, uh, on the horizontal axis is the runtime in seconds, and on vertical axis is uh, the code size. So, uh, the Pareto front is evolving from uh, evolving to bottom left, and we can find here uh, sweet spots, uh, for example, yellow one, which uh, has the same performance uh, as O2 and uh, with much better uh, same performance as O3, which uh, O3 with much better code size, or vice versa, the same code size with better performance. On 
x86 uh, the picture is uh, almost the same for this application you can still uh, tune it uh, even for a uh, very popular platform uh, very old ones and the tuning time is uh, not so long uh, we usually use the two arm test boards and uh, set up an application so it took uh, one minute uh, runtime, and it was, it was equal to a build time. We took uh, all of uh, 200 GC options and set 80 species uh, in a population. With two population, it's assigned to its, each own uh, test board. And uh, run 30 generations, uh, which is just 40 hours. But uh, for two uh, spec application, which was market NA, uh, it didn't find uh, a result better than O2 in 30 generations, but for uh, other applications it did. So uh, basically you can leave it for a weekend and then uh, you can spend a week looking at the issues it, was, it has found automatically. Uh, very uh, quick is uh, option filtering just the two hours because it involves only a compilation and uh, ranging options by their performance significance is uh, comparable with the tuning itself. Uh, this is uh, the maximum uh, performance found uh, for each generation for three applications. Uh, for those uh, Better than O2, uh, performance was found even in the first generation and 50% uh, of improvement uh, was found just in five generations. So it's pretty quick to find uh, something better than O2. So uh, we have presented uh, Duct, a tool for automatic compiler tuning, uh, which is focused uh, on uh, compiler development rather than obtaining a uh, long obscure option string to make it work faster. The results that it gives are uh, stable uh, across uh, data sets and can be used in improving the compiler. Uh, it can speed up applications in the range of 15 to 30 uh, percent which is uh, comparable to profile-guided optimizations and uh, speed up sp SPEC 2000 tests by 10% uh, on average. And uh, the 80% of improvement comes uh, from a very small number of options uh, that is manageable and you can look at and check uh, manually. Uh, from uh, this tuning, we have developed a few small fixes uh, which are now in the main line and the tool uh, will be released under uh, open source license later this year. Thank you. So, um, in the state where you were going from the raw to the pared down list of options, why did you not um, just include 